To every beginning, there is an end. There's a full stop you can't erase, a rewind button you can't hit, indelible ink that no amount of washing or wishing could clean. Nothing makes sense and it feels like it's not supposed to. It's sad and you're angry and it hurts all at the same time. But it's too late now. They're gone. He's gone. She's gone. So where does that leave us? To the grieving soul, these journaling prompts are for you. Hello, I'm Daniela and welcome to my floral journal, your journaling guide towards clarity and self-love. I love journaling. I have been journaling for over a decade now and this video is specifically for everyone who has recently lost a loved one or someone really close to them. And first of all, I'm really sorry that that has happened to you and I'm giving you a virtual hug. I have honestly lost my grandmother as well so i know what you're going through and it's very difficult and even just talking about it is difficult but that's exactly why we need to talk about it and we can just start that healing process and i'm here to guide you on a journaling journey because most likely before you've lost your loved one you may not have said everything that you wanted to say because that just comes at the most unexpected times. So in this video, I want to guide you on how to write a letter to your loved one who passed away, anything and everything that you wish you could have said. And so let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the letter in different parts as paragraphs, but you can have more than one paragraph for each part or section. It's really up to you. So to begin, let's start by addressing the letter. You know, write, hey, hi, hello, or if there's any special nickname that you call them. And break the ice. So talk to them as if they were right beside you or if they were in front of you. And this can bring up a lot of emotion. So allow yourself to cry because it is a sad part that they're gone. And being sad is actually honoring them. It means that you miss them and that, you know, you wish they were still around. So it's not a bad feeling to feel sad. And the more that you repress it, the longer it goes on, but once you start to accept it, you can start healing as well. And so a psychology study has found that there are two types of regrets when it comes to someone passing away, and one is regrets of omission, and the other one is regrets of commission. So commission just means that you regret things that you did towards that person, while omission means regrets of things that you did not do or things you did not say towards that person. So one way of healing this regret is by being able to express yourself in this letter. And the second part of the letter is to apologize for things you may have done or said in the past to hurt your loved ones. And research does show that the more that you blame yourself, the longer it will take you to really heal from their loss and I don't think that we ever really get over the loss of someone but we find healthier ways to deal with it and to heal and so asking for forgiveness not just from them but also hopefully you can also find a way to heal and forgive yourself because they're no longer around to say hey I forgive you but you can grant yourself that permission and give yourself that forgiveness that you're seeking and third part of the letter is to appreciate so write about everything that you appreciate about your loved one the things they did to make you laugh even cry why not and the things happy memories you know the things that they taught you anything that you really appreciate about them and those are things that you also are gonna miss about them, but it's good to acknowledge the good as well. And so number four, and this is optional because it may not apply to you, but if they ever did anything that upset you in return, now it's also time to forgive them and, and release them as well because you know they're no longer around so those feelings also deserve healing and so then read about the 
thing that they did that made you really mad or upset or whether it was something they said or the way that they made you feel and then find it in your heart to really forgive them and also you know it may not happen immediately but at least you can acknowledge that there are things to forgive and you can work your way towards healing that hurt and so finally we have come to the end of the letter so write anything else that comes to mind maybe things that you w still want to share with them like hey today you know i did really well at school i got good grades for this test or hey today i finished university i graduated or i passed this board exam and i'm so freaking um happy to share it with you because i know that you will be so proud of me and uh, I'm, i really am getting emotional because these are things that i'm actually grateful my grandma was around to to see but that may not be the case for you and you can still share them share it with them in the letter and you know anything else really that you want to tell them and i'm really sorry for that beeping in the background <laughs> and you can also say things like you will be forever in our hearts or you know everything that you taught me i will continue to live on so that your essence and who you are as a person still lives on in me and i know it may sound cheesy but honestly when you're in that mood and when you're just writing the letter it all just flows and it makes sense so be as in touch as you are with your feelings and don't suppress them because again it, it it will not it will only hurt you more than it helps in the long run and so we have come to the end of the letter structure but i want to share the letter that i wrote for my grandmother and this is actually the whole inspiration for this video i based this structure based on the letter that i wrote so i want to share that with you it's here on my floral journal of course <laughs> so i call her nai nai and it's like a spin-off of the filipino bird for mother which is nanai and um here you go <laughs> hi nai nai i miss you it has been nine days and it has not gotten easier going to the philippines is not the same without you waiting for us I feel guilty for the times I made you cry, worried you, and made you feel bad in any other way. I hope you know that I love you, and this is me asking for forgiveness. Um, so it's so weird how someone can just not be there. Yes, we will keep you alive in our thoughts and way of life, but that does not ease things. It's just the same. I will always treasure the times I hugged you and made sure you knew that I love you. I saved those moments for these days. I am grateful I took the chance. A part of me cries because I only greeted you a happy new year. But without saying I love you. I hope you know that you know me. You, <laughs> you are so loved. I am not afraid of your ghost. It's still you, because <laughs> everyone in the Philippines was so afraid of like seeing her ghost, and they were like, "Don't haunt us," because you know we. Our culture just believes in ghosts a lot. Um, so to conclude the letter, thank you for your kindness, strength, and generosity that you showed us. I love you. I miss you. And it is so okay to cry. It is so okay to cry. And so that's the letter for today. And if you do come up with any more prompts or any more ideas as you know you write down, feel free to share them in the comment section below. And let's bring about healing to everyone. And I know it is so tough and you are so strong for making it and for wanting to heal 
and that's exactly why you're watching this video i'm so proud of you i'm here to hug you you are not alone and thank you so much for watching enjoy the journaling prompts and please just give this video a thumbs up if you liked it be sure to subscribe for more journaling goodness and um until the next video happy journaling and have an adventure within yourself